what are you willing to sacrifice, you know, to be remembered by who? I want to be remembered by my family. By my family. Work smarter, not harder. But working smart is hard. How people get confused, people think they can rest as much as they want and still have the things. And I'm saying, yo, go ahead and rest. Just know that you're sacrificing that. And if you say you really want that, then you have to sacrifice rest. But you can't have both. It, it just, it, it, it bothers me. It's, it burns me up inside when somebody say, they can't do it as if I don't struggle. Real change actually requires you to change. I'm Simeon Pando. Tank. I'm Melvin Gregg. This is another episode of Nice and Me. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. Welcome back to another episode. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan, and this is another episode of the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Nice and neat. Again, I'm here with my brothers. We all in the same queue of black. Um, and okay. man, we got we got we got an interesting interesting topic today. We got an interesting topic because I feel like our lives have been shifting so much. So much has been happening, and I'm gonna use this time to be able to kind of just tap in and see where you guys are at. This is gonna be a check in for me. But our topic today, man, it's gonna be kind of around rest and work. You know, which are you favoring more right now? Are you are you more in 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 your rest area at your rest era, or are you willing to give up some rest in order to achieve your goals that you're kind of looking for? Um, I know me, I kind of bounce back and forth, but we'll talk about it a little bit more as we get throughout this episode. But man, you know what? I'm I'm gonna start with you. Oh, you're on the uh, you're on the verge of being a father. Thirty three weeks. Baby Ocean is almost here. Yep. And, um, you know, I know you, you mentioned before that you've been tired and you've been getting rest. What do you feel like is going to change, if anything, when baby Ocean gets here as, a, as it goes to your rest and your level of diligence within your work that you've been oh, on as well? Oh, a lot. I would say uh, unpredictability. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm glad you know that, brother. I ain't going to speak for you. <laughs> I, I, think, I think, honestly, that's actually something that honestly gives me the most anxiety about the the anticipation of my daughter coming um but yeah i i would say you know w when she comes it's it's kind of hard to kind of stay in in a, a routine that i have she's gonna she's gonna give me a whole new one you know and I, what i'm learning from families like yours the other people that we have in our circle is like them kids man they kind of really call the shots mm -hmm. it, it's kind of it's kind of really really tough to uh uh do everything that you had planned your plan kind of it seems as if your plan goes out the window and you you guys you know that that phrase of like entrepreneurship they say like you know you don't have a plan you build one as you as you're falling off the cliff or mm -hmm. something like i'm paraphrasing yeah, yeah 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 you know what i mean but i i feel like it's going to be a lot of those moments where we're just kind of figuring it out on the go for but sure I, I would say unpredictability yeah the number one yeah i'll tell you, you you're gonna you're definitely gonna have a new normal yeah you're going to absolutely have uh, a new normal, but because you're going to be so intentional on getting back to what normal is going to, not back, you're going to be so intentional on trying to achieve what normal C is going to be. It's going to take time, but you'll get there. For sure. For you'll sure. You'll get there. For sure. I, I mean, I guess you did say that you did, you create a new normal. You create a new normal. You create a new normal. There is right? like, like, you don't get back to normal C. Yeah. You created, you create a new normal, right? You have a sense of normalcy that you create. So, uh, let's say, for example, you were a six o'clock gym guy. Mm -hmm. Let's say baby girl's bath time at six o'clock. You might, it might, it might just shift a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it might just shift a little bit. You might have to be a 6 a.m. gym guy. You know, maybe she sleeps a little bit longer, but you'll find that out mm -hmm. as she finds out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can do whatever we want to do and try to work towards those things. But, uh, is is that is that the like the what we got saying is it pretty much like soft life? Which part? I don't resting. I, like I'm in my if I'm in my rest area. Is that, is that like a male version of soft life? No. Okay. I, I don't think so. I okay. don't think so. And I, I say if I'm in my rest area, to me, it's actually working smarter, not harder. Okay. For me, when I'm saying that, because I think as we should be resting as cre as just creatures, we should be resting 
Um, anyway, capitalism tells us otherwise, but mm-hmm. I feel like if you can accomplish, like the goal for me is to accomplish everything that I, that I used to take eight to 12 hours to accomplish mm-hmm. in one to three mm-hmm. in three to four hours. But if I could cut off a fraction of the time and make the same amount, if not more money, then that is what the goal is for me. Because now that time that we're using as rest yeah. is now allocated towards the betterment of my family. Yeah. What if the what if the um the time, whether you whether it's the eight hours or the three hours, what if the time is not enough output to get the thing that you want in, out of life? Right? Because I know your goal is to condense the time, mm-hmm. right? But that time is still the input to get the output out of a bigger, much larger goal. What if it's not enough for that? I like that you said that. So if my output is required, let's call it 24 hours a week. Let's just call it 24 hours uh-huh. a week. Let's say in six days, some people will break it up and do four hours. Mm-hmm. If I know exactly what I need to do, I'm going to use 12 hours for two days. And I'm going to put everything into those two days and I'm going to be free the rest, of the, the rest of the week if I know that's what it requires. I'm trying to work in spots now. I feel like, I feel like our, our output that we're used to mm-hmm. is constant. We're used to banging our head against the wall every single day until we can make a dent rather than, hey, let me do it this way. Mm-hmm. Let me use this tool to do it. Let me work this way to do it. So... You know, if something requires time, I think that we should allocate the, just to allocate the time differently. Time never changes. Right. That's the thing about time. It never changes. Okay. And I feel like a lot of the times when we are trying to say like, okay, I have to do this amount of time, we kind of are putting our schedule on other people's schedule. Mm -hmm. Like if you got to work through the night one night, cool. But that just means tomorrow you, you off. Mm -hmm. You should, you have the ability to. Control that. To control that. Okay. So like that's just kinda that's kinda how I'm looking at it these okay. days. I'm not forcing myself to do nothing to do too much yeah. that I can't achieve. Your question was if you're in your resting era, are you not working? Yeah. Is, that, is that what you No no the question was is is resting era for, for guys. Like the soft like is this like soft the equivalent life? of like soft soft, I'm ready for a soft life. Soft life. With me. Nah, because I I would say that I'm in a resting era, but I'm resting so that when I do work Mm. I'm as potent, full, yep. uh, full efficient, strength. full strength. Full strength. So my rest is like charge up for the work. I got you. You know what I mean? Rather than just rest, just resting because I'm, I'm in my soft life. I don't feel like doing anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's more so like I'm resting because I'm. And I was having a conversation with a friend yeah. earlier today, actually, where I'm resting because I I want to make wise this wise and great decisions right i don't always want to make the strong decision mm-hmm. and sometimes i need to i need the time to rest to actually think about mm-hmm. how to proceed properly right mm-hmm. and make make sure i take the, the the proper step but mine is definitely yo i'm charging up so i could work extremely hard what if you are striving for a michael jordan level type greatness mm-hmm. now that you got to understand that's a that's a different level of greatness that we're talking about that's okay. like a that's one percent uh-huh. That, that like those are Michael Jordan's, Kobe Bryant's, Tom uh-huh. Brady's, uh-huh. Patrick Mahomes. Those are those type of those type of players. Those, mm-hmm. That's a different level of commitment, and you gotta be willing to give up something. Mm. That come with a price. That come with a price. That come with an enormous price. Okay. That come. With, I think me and you, Jalan, we used to have this conversation often about Brett Favre back in the day about greatness. I feel like you always reference him in that situation mm-hmm. about him achieving greatness and stuff like that. And like, yeah, he walked out with greatness, but. And just like many other football players, but he he he's not in good shape. No, nah. you know what I mean. No, nah, his so, body is not where okay, he wants to be. Okay, that was a sacrifice. That was a sacrifice. Yeah. That was a sacrifice. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was that was a sacrifice. There's a, there's a sacrifice. Whether it's your body, whether it's your family, you know, what are you willing to sacrifice? You know, to be remembered by who? I want to be remembered by my family. By my family. Ah, so you not think, everybody else. All right. So so That's good, Jalan. So do you feel that like <laughs> we need to? Because cause it's, it's it's hard to say, okay, we got to rest this amount of time. We need to condense the rest without saying we also need to shift our idea of success, right? And shift our idea of these lofty goals. And because we had these big, these big ambitions that require a certain output. An enormous amount of work. And it requires an enormous amount of work. 
You know what I mean? But if, if we want though, if we if we if we say, yo, I wanna I want a balanced life and I really actually want to just condense it, then we kinda gotta I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying so is how do you achieve those things? Okay, how do you work less, achieve those things in a shorter amount of time? I think you have to be extremely intentional. So things are being sacrificed, but it just may be hang out time with your friends. I got you. Okay. You know, yep. it 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 is not I'm not sacrificing my time to just go out and mm-hmm. just hang out, right? So if I'm out if I'm in a season where I have to work all the time, it's a season. Mm-hmm. So for example, let's say I'm an actor and I'm mm-hmm. shooting a movie and I'm working every single day, mm-hmm. it's a season. Mm-hmm. If we are now going to do promo, it's a season. And mm-hmm. through that, my family going to be with me so they can see what season that we're in. Mm-hmm. But when it's downtime, I don't need to be, okay, now let me go ahead and make sure I can make it to the club so people can see me. And they make sure, I, nah, yeah. I shot my movie. I did the promo. I did what I got paid yeah. for. It's time to rest. It's time to rest yeah. and relax now mm-hmm. and work on the next thing. Okay. So, Okay, let's say, for example, this paid me X amount of dollars. Now let me work on the next thing that's going to pay me double that. Because I put in the work that I needed to put in in order to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we are so used to, not only do we want to do the job, we want to be in the spotlight for doing the job, and then we just want to be in the spotlight as well. Like, yo, the same exact way where a celebrity could... When he has his movie, he goes through his press run, he disappears, you don't see him no more, comes back out, does it again. We could participate in our life like that. Mm-hmm. Like we can we can do the same things to achieve what we're trying to achieve. I think it's a lot of things that I want to achieve that I'm paying attention to now. I don't have to sit down for 12 hours to try to achieve it. Mm-hmm. I can be like if I put if I put 2 hours of intentional time mm-hmm. into this thing mm-hmm. during this window, I can get what I'm trying to get done Mm -hmm. that can get me to the next level. Maybe the next level requires more time. Maybe it doesn't, but just me paying attention, the employee typically works more than the owner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like in me looking at it like that, it's like if I'm the owner and my employee work eight hours, why would I work the equivalent amount of time? Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like you put in the work to work smarter and not harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like yeah. when you young, when you young things. when you young that's what I'm saying like when you young you got to be strong yeah. you know what I mean yeah. when you as you get as we age we get older it's right. time to turn that strength and to start being wise yes that, I don't I don't have to be I don't yeah. have to put in the twelve hours all all the time I don't got to be front facing all I don't the have time. to do that that's okay. being strong let me use my wisdom I want to use more brain power less physical activity yes right let me put it together like that. I need more brain power in this situation to figure out how I'm going to make this work. And honestly, I don't know too many people that are filthy rich or even have a lot of money that is just like they're moving all the time. They're moving all the time. They're actually not moving. Those are the people who I actually see have more time. Yeah. No, for sure. The people who I see moving all the time are people that are trying to sustain something. They're trying to... They're not... They don't have the money those people have. For sure. Two things. Um, Just want to clarify something, right? Something you said that was really important. You said, if I could get the same amount of work that I could do in 12 hours in two, then I'm going to do that. And I think that's really important because it's not about time. It's about output or input. So if you could max, if you could just focus and and just block off all distraction, procrastination, Mm -hmm. wasting time in those two hours, then it's still the same amount of work. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? It's just condensed. That that, that makes a lot of sense. And um, I believe in that. Uh, but the owner thing, you see the owner, he's not working a lot. You know what I mean? Today. You, today. Today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Today. You don't know what he did. how much work he's done mm-hmm. to get to that. I'm not saying where he's at is the idea for you, but I'm just saying that in terms of him reaching a goal for him that's successful, he must, he probably had to sacrifice that. Right? And the thing about, the thing about people say, because Work work smarter, not harder. I believe it. But working smart is hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's good. Yo, it is. yo, working smart is not easy, yep. bro. Yep. Like, hey, hire people. Hiring people is hard. Yep. Yeah. Going through the hiring process of finding a team. Finding the right people. To, yep. So you can work. That's hard work. Yep. Doing the research, that's hard work. So it's still going to be hard work. Yeah. You know, and I think people, when people hear us, 
that they they think that I don't really have to do as much or I, they don't have oh, to do as nah. much. They don't have to do as much, but it's just like it's not it's not that it's gonna be. You still gotta work hard. You understand what I'm saying? So I think it's just an interesting place. I feel like yo, if you have a goal and and this is something that you really say you want, then that sacrifice includes rest. The sacrifice includes food sometimes. <laughs> the sacrifice includes family sometimes. The sacrifice includes your body sometimes because this is the thing you said you wanted. Mm -hmm. All right? And who's... I, I'm not... I can't tell... I, I can't create a level of greatness. Like, I can't say, yo, well, you're not going to be Michael Jordan, so you should probably not work that hard. That's not for me to say. If you say you want to you want to have a Michael Jordan level of success or a LeBron James level of success or a Serena Williams level of success, all right? Then a hey, I believe hey, you got to sacrifice a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Not because you don't care about it though. Only because you feel like on the back end everything's going to be better. And then you become that owner who's working smarter now, who is not working at all and, he, and has employees. But that's built on the back of a lot of work, yeah. you know, oftentimes. And I think that I, I, what it is is the hours and the work. Hours and work aren't equivalent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. But the work still, it's, you're still going to work it's, really, really it's hard. Like, it's like being, versus, being busy versus being productive. productive. Yeah. For sure. And I, so you're correct. I'm a passion guy, though, right? Mm -hmm. So- when I hear the word sacrifice, to me, it's doing things that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice in me staying up at night, working on something that I just want to, I want to get off of the ground. I'm excited about it. It's not even sacrifice. I'm just doing what I said that I'm trying to achieve. So, for example, let's say we're working on things that we want to get done. And it's like, hey, yo, the deadline is this day. I look, okay, I need a, I need to do this much work in this amount of time. If that means that I got to go to bed at 3 o'clock every morning, then I just got to go to bed at 3 o'clock every morning. You don't see it as a sacrifice? It is a sacrifice. It, it's still, I think no, it's still I'm a sacrifice. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm saying what my what my understanding of sacrifice is, I don't Doing something look that at, you don't want to do. Yeah. And you want to do that. And I want to do that. I said I wanted to do that. So I don't look at it as a sacrifice. It's like, hey, yo, hey, oh, if you need help with anything, just let me know. And then he says, hey, man, I need help cleaning up this, this, and this. I don't be like, oh, man, I sacrificed my time for you, bro. I don't look at it like that. I said I would do it. Yeah. I said that I would do it. I'm a big, I'm I'm just gotta be a man of my word with what, what I said. So if I tell myself, like, hey, yo, this is a goal that I wanna get done and I wanna accomplish this. If I gotta be up till three, then I'm up till three and I wake up happy. I don't wake up like, oh man. I'm yo, but I, I would accept that if I ask you, oh, okay, you go to sleep at three or you wake up at three, I'll ask you, yo, do you enjoy sleep? Do you enjoy sleep? Conditionally, and if you if you say no, I accept it. It's not a sacrifice because you don't okay, enjoy okay. it. Okay, I got you. I got you. But if you, you enjoy, enjoy that, if sleep. you enjoy I sleep, you. You enjoy you, that if sleep. you enjoy sleep, but you got to give it up, that's a sacrifice. I t okay, so for example, I enjoy I enjoy rest. hanging out. I say rest. <laughs> I enjoy hanging out, right? But this is just not that season. This is not the season where I could just call people up and be like, "Hey, yo, let's go and do this." Cause I could trick off. I don't have trick off time. I don't. I don't have trick off time. If we hang out, it's so intentional that we probably gonna get something done that I'm trying to get done mm -hmm. in that space. So I don't know, bro. I just feel like maybe it's my naivety, but to say that I'm sacrificing and I have a healthy body and I could breathe and this is something I want to do and my mind is clear and I said this is what I want to achieve. I can't even fix my word to say like I'm sacrificing. Mm -hmm. I, it just, the word is so strong to me to say sacrifice. Like sacrifice is for me, for me, we're talking about me. I can't do it and I'm going to do my best to do it. I physically can't get, I, I have an ailment in my body that say I can't do it and I'm going to still try to make it to your birthday. I am dying inside yeah. and I'm going to try to, I'm going to sacrifice my health yeah. to make it. I don't, I don't sacrifice nothing, bro. I live a yeah. good life. If I have a, a thought and I want to execute on that thought, I can't say I'm ex I'm sacrificing. Yeah. I don't believe that. So, and I don't have I don't have too much empathy for anybody chasing their goals and they saying how hard chasing their goals are. It's yours. You made that up. Is it is it a lot of work if you enjoy the work? No. It's not. No. 
So it's not. The, the, so the 12 hours that you work, mm -hmm. then you don't really need rest if you're enjoying it, though, do you? That's not nah, true. That, if my body say I need to rest, my body okay, say I need okay, to okay. rest. Okay, it's, okay, it's I'm not saying thing. like, okay. yeah, it's a, literally a physical thing. Okay. If my mind say I need to rest, my mind say I need to rest. You. If I can't think anymore, I got I to gotta I got get you. some rest. But it doesn't mean that you don't, you don't enjoy. But what I'm saying is I'm not scheduling it. Scheduling I, what? I'm not going to schedule... I'm not going to, maybe I don't know my body well enough, but I'm not going to schedule the rest. Uh, I'm going to go until I can't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the time? That's that's the approach? Not, not, not all the time. That's, not all the time, but I'm going to go until I can't when I've created these windows. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. sp speaking of, of going until you can't, like, how often are you guys listening to that voice that says, yo, oh, I mean, enough, enough is enough. Hey, 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 we need, hey, shut, shut, it it down. Down. shut it on down. Shut it down. Shut it on yeah. down. Hey, we, we need some rest. Mm hmm how, cause, cause there is a point where you ignore that voice, yeah. Or there's been points in in the past where we have ignored that voice. But how often are you guys acknowledging that and listening to it today? Not much. <laughs> Not much. But here's the thing, though, because that voice could kick in way earlier than I planned. All right. So that means if I t if I'm talking to you, hey, babe. This week I want to work from, um, I want to start work from twelve to six. Let's just say six. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I may be working and that voice kicking at twelve. I mean at, at three o'clock. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But it's not what I planned. Yeah. But I'm tired mm -hmm. and it's telling me I need to rest. I'll ignore it because it's outside of the scope of what I what I put in stone for us. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, yo, I control, like, I don't just like fall victim to, you know, whatever my mind tells me. I think I, I try to have willpower to push forward because I think it's necessary mm -hmm. because most of us are going to hear that voice. And I think that's, that oftentimes is a difference between just like that's that small pushing, pushing like just a couple more inches mm -hmm. And not and then not achieving those results mm -hmm. or not achieving that success or not learning that thing, you know, or not building those habits. So oftentimes I don't, bro. But also I think I know my body so well that oh I know I know it's just me. It's just me being it's just it's just me trying to it's just trying to shut me down. You know what I mean? And here's the other thing that we don't talk about. The healthier you are, the more healthy habits you have, the the food you eat. The more you can compromise on rest. Now I'm not saying hey, be up all night. Sure. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that yo, for you, you may need nine hours. Yep. For me, I may need six. Mm -hmm. Okay. My body composition is different, right? For you, you may need nine hours because the content you're consuming. Mm -hmm. For me, I may need that because my shit is pure. Yep. You know what I mean? So all these things factor into how much rest you feel like you need, or how healthy you are, or how many naps you're taking throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Right, because if you take a nap throughout the day, then you may not need the same six hours. Yep. And taking care of your body, you know how they say, okay, when we was playing football, you say, hey, yo, get off your feet. Yep. Getting off your feet is resting. That's a that's that's resting itself. Yep. Put the device down. Don't think about it. that's resting itself. So little things like that. If you're doing those things, then everyone doesn't move, doesn't doesn't need the same type of rest. You know what I'm saying? And then as long as like another thing about me is, I try to base my how I am around people. So if I'm really aggravated around you and I'm always irritable about, I need some rest. <laughs> now I got to get some rest because now it's affecting my interactions. I need some rest. I, I, I need you out of my space. No, that's, no, that's real. No, I need you out of my space. Because <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, not it's not just being physically tired, but it's a being emotionally irritable. Oh, I need some rest. Oh, my eyes. Oh, I start feeling my eyes. Okay, I need some rest. But just like feeling the feeling of like sleepiness. I'll push past that. So you, okay, oh, I feel like, is rest a reward for you? Or is rest just, it's, nah, it's, 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 it's in there. Rest is a requirement. Okay. Rest is not a reward. I don't look at rest like a, I don't look at like, oh man, like, nah. I, oh, I worked so hard today, I could finally get some rest. Mm -hmm. Nah, I need this rest so I could put my best foot forward tomorrow, regardless of how today went. You can't, we can't go through life basing like, uh, 
our days off of the results. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, you got to base it off of the I, work. That was good right there. You got to base this shit off the work. Because sometimes you can put in a bunch of work and still not yield the results that you're looking for. Right? So you got to base this shit. And that's that time that I'm saying now you look like you're wasting. Because you're chasing something that's not going to happen today. So rest for me is mandatory, right? Because I put it in the work. So if I put in the work, if I put in the work, regardless of what the results are, I need to rest. Regard most, uh, maybe maybe someone like yourself could say, um, you know, I'm only gonna rest once I achieve mm -hmm. this thing. And to me, that doesn't help me be successful the next day, right? Regardless of what I set out to achieve, whether I achieved it or not, right? If I put in the work, I gotta rest so I can yeah. go back and do it again the next time I decide to do it, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in two days, or whether it's next week. Right. So for me, rest is not a reward. It's a requirement. It's a requirement for you to be at your optimal like level, to perform at peak level, to perform, to get my best each time I have to have my rest. Now, don't get me wrong. And I'm sure you guys could attest to this, too. There are times where you've performed really well without having little to no rest. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't think it's an ideal situation to to ad adopt to your lifestyle on Every, a daily basis. Yeah, in a daily. No. Yeah. No. I'm a dog though. I, That's I, what I'm saying. Like I can, I can go mm -hmm. and I can go until I can't anymore. And then once my eyes open again, I'm ready to do it again. Mm -hmm. Like it's no, I don't feel what yesterday ever felt like. My body doesn't, my body doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. I know when I need to shut it down. So I'm like, it's time to shut it down. Mm -hmm. But I take pride in being able to outwork anybody who stands next to me if outwork myself outwork what i thought i would be able to do i take a lot of pride in it so i do i do rest is absolutely required i don't think you can ever get away from rest it's like saying i don't need to eat it's silly yeah you absolutely need a rest i know some people that are optimal after sleeping eight hours i know some people that, like you said optimal after sleeping nine hours but i can get through certain things with you know, an hour here, two hours there, 15 minutes here. Like I can, I can do that. So like, even just when we had our son, I did all of the night feedings because Brittany can't go back to sleep. Me, I can break my sleep up and be like, oh, I'm a little tired, but I could still do what I need to do. Uh, and I, I learned a lot about myself through that process. And I, I knew myself pretty well, but I learned a lot of, a lot about myself as far as how far I could push my body, how far I can go in order to still achieve what I need to do. So even in those spaces and taking care of things that I needed to take care of to get me to the next level, uh, it's, it's been important. Um, but when we're talking about being in a rest phase, right, I think now I am getting more rest and I am able to be more leisure with how I do attack things, if that makes any sense. So instead of saying I have to put 12 hours in, as we, as we were saying, it's like I can put in two concentrated hours and kind of relax. Or I can put in 30 concentrated minutes and relax rather than just banging my head against the wall for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And I can still achieve what I'm trying to achieve. I think it just looks different. I feel like you know, we're in our 30s now, and I feel like when you get to your your 30s, it's not like your 20s to where you are, you you boss to the wall every single day, every single day. In your 30s, they say you start kind of figuring things out a little bit, and you know how much time that you can take. So instead of having that initial two hours of procrastination, you kind of could just like jump into it, get it done, and... Be like, you know, these three tasks that would have took me four hours to do, I just did it in 25, 25 minutes, and I'm good to go. Mm. And the extra three hours in, in 35 minutes, I don't have to feel anymore. I can just be with my family. I can watch that movie that me and my lady said we was going to watch. I can just relax with that time. I don't have to fill it up. I feel like I used to have to fill every minute with productivity mm -hmm. before, and I still was just spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. I feel much more successful moving like that. Like you saying, like I got the job done today. I can relax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go all day, every day anymore and just feel that time. Do you guys catch yourself feeling that time still? Or when you're done with something that you said you were going to do today, mm -hmm. tomorrow comes and you're like, okay, new day. Or do you try to do what tomorrow is in the same day? 
that part. You try to maximize? Yeah. If I got it, I'm if going. If I got it. Mm-hmm. If I got right? it. Because sometimes, sometimes you could be in a flow state. Yeah. That's true. Sometimes you could be, and you don't want to interrupt that. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't know what's going to come again. Mm-hmm. You could work, but some, that flow state is different. But you're, mentally, you're clicking. Physically, you're clicking. You got concentration out the works. You're not, you don't care about your phone. All right? A lot of times that happens when you're building something. Yep. But yeah. I don't know about you, but when you have been building something in the past, for, it's funny because you talk about rest. That flow state for me has come at the oddest times. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. talking like 2, 3 no, a.m. Nothing else matters. A.m. And I'm like, I should be going to sleep, but right now I am it's I am dialed in. Yeah. That's that's actually such a beautiful space to be yeah. in. Yeah. And like you're right, bro. You never wanna you don't want to cut that you off. Don't right interrupt it. Nah, it's the, t- the creative juices is flowing. <laughs> nah, I'm in I'm like, in rhythm. Yeah, that that's mm. actually a beautiful I, I I wish for all of us that are in search of whatever it is that we're finding yeah. and, and after in life to, that we all find that flow state, yeah. you know, constantly throughout yeah. the week. Cause yeah. that right there helps us achieve so much yeah. and unlock so many different levels for you personally too. Like you leave there, you'd be like, Oh shit. If I catch that flow again, boy, I'd be somebody yeah. dangerous. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of feel these days I feel indifferent about the flow state. Mm. I feel indifferent about the flow state because if the flow state comes at the end of me doing something, and like I finished it, for me to kind of consistently be consistent and not just look at, all right, let me try to put this all in a vacuum. I'm going to have to push it to tomorrow. Not push it to tomorrow. I'm just, if this was what was on the menu for tomorrow. It's going to take me to tomorrow to get it done. I'm going I'm to I'm do it tomorrow. Oh, okay. I, I get you. I'm going to do I it tomorrow. Put it on tomorrow's plan. I got you. Because it's you. already at tomorrow. You know, I might be able to utilize my flow state because my flow state might have been I was working and I feel good and I finished it, right? And I got energy to do something else. I can use your flow state is transferable. So now I can be more, I can be more flirtatious with my girl without being agitated. <laughs> I can play more, be more playful in the in the house. I'm just gonna move the flow somewhere else. I just move the flow somewhere else yep. because it's like I still got to make these deposits here and yep. there. Yeah, and I'm I'm starting to learn that the level of the the level of selfishness that we think with is is actually much larger than I ever gave it credit for. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, well, I want to get this done. I said I was gonna get it done. I'm gonna get it done. And it's like, all right, well, you got that done. Well, it's always something. To, it's always something to do. For sure. Mm-hmm. I still, I gotta paint the trimmings in in the bathroom. I gotta right. do this. And it's like some days I do have energy to do it yeah. after I completed my day. But I'm like, yo, I could really, I could really make a bigger deposit in this space. Yeah. Actually, like I do know I need to get that done, but I could make a larger deposit in this space, and I could just do what I said that I was gonna do already because that was on tomorrow's menu already let me just go ahead and take care of it tomorrow yeah. and i actually feel like it's helped me with my consistency because yeah. i can finish something that takes two weeks and two days but then the other 12 days that i'm not doing what i'm supposed to be doing i don't pick up a new task i just kind of fall out of the flow for those 12 days and it takes me a second to get it back because i finished so fast mm-hmm. it's like the kid in class right if you got a test and the test is supposed to take the entire class to do it and you finish early and now you're talking in class and you get in trouble and you getting a good grade on the test gets overlooked because you was talking in class. Like, you could have just took your time, went over it again, looked at it a few times and you're like, oh, okay, cool, I'm done. I'm trying to do that now. I want to be like, all right, cool, I did this very thoroughly. I did it great. There's no questions about it and I move on to tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and any additional energy that I have, like, I'll put it somewhere else. Like, we were just talking about, you know, like, what time are you guys going to bed these days? Yeah. What time are you going to bed these days? Uh, I like to be in the bed 9.45, 10 o'clock. For real? For, I'm talking about in the bed. Now, I don't have to be, I probably go to sleep around 10.30 every, on a consistent basis. Um, but I'm trying to get in that bed 9.45, 10 o'clock every day. Average, I'm in the bed at 9 o'clock. You be in the bed at 9? On average. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. yep. What average. time you fall asleep? 11. 11.30. Oh, so you, you lay in the bed for a little bit. Yeah. You're an animal. Me, I, that me, bed once is, I touch that bed, it's, it's, it, I'm, I'm on yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I, I hit the bed, I'm, I'm over. I'm gotta, I got to show on the couch. What you be doing for two hours in the bed? Me and Chanel catch, catch an episode on Netflix. Oh, you got a TV in your room. Yeah. 
catch an episode. Oh. Y'all, you, you don't do TVs in your room? No, we don't have any TV upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But look, I feel like rest, though, is um, rest should not be a reward. It should be something that you just need. Mm-hmm. Okay? Rest is not like celebration. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, celebration is a reward. Mm-hmm. Right? Rest is just rest. Um, But I like to think of it like this. The reason I feel so strongly about just hard work because so many people are telling the world hey yo yo it's unhealthy to work hard it's unhealthy to work hard but i don't think it's unhealthy to work hard i think hard work is the foundation of a lot of people's fulfilling life you know and i like and i understand that working smarter as a as a practicality right but as a as like a as a as a mindset and a habit working hard i'm gonna work hard all day because it's going to transcend different things so if i have the habit of working hard in the mindset that i'm going to work hard i'm gonna work as hard as i can for this thing then when i become a father i'm gonna work hard as hell to be the greatest father i could be Mm -hmm. i'm gonna work hard as hell to be the greatest husband i could i could be but the idea of hard work has to be for me ingrained in me at all times because I don't want to ever feel like I'm cutting corners for the things that I want in life. All right. And I do believe that, yo, there's no such thing as balance. You're either doing something or doing something else. All right. Balance is trying to do two things at one time. But we are our minds are not wired like that. We have to give our attention to two different things at different times. And I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? I think the, the key for me is like, hey, yo, what is the things you what are the things you value and you say you say are important to you? Okay, how can you get that? How can you get there? What is needed to get there? Okay, that's needed. Okay, do whatever you need to do to get that. But you gotta put a time frame on it, you gotta put a stipulations on it, you gotta put certain things on it. It just can't be infinite. And I think that's the key for me. And that's kind of my approach, man, because Cause like, you know, life, getting the shit that we want out of life, man, is hard, bro. It's not easy. So having a mindset of, and I understand the rhetoric of it work smarter, but having a mindset, like what's, what's happening is you telling, we're telling people to work smarter and work smarter and work smarter. And they're, they're misinterpreting that. Right. And they're saying, okay, well, I don't have to work hard. No, you do got to work hard. You got to work hard as hell. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't work hard, somebody like me going to outwork you. Mm-hmm. And if we want the same thing, I'm gonna get it before you. So, so my question is, um, what are you working for? I'm working for my family. Okay. What is the thing you're working for that's gonna make your family have the goal? Is it? It's money. I, I'm working. I'm is working. It, what is it, it for? It, it, it is money, but money is the tool. Okay. Right. Money's a tool because, like, it's really, hey, yo, because I could say money, but then it's still okay. How much money? Okay. Well, it's never enough. Here's here's the thing, though. It's never enough. But <laughs> how much money? Well, oh, I don't know. Just a lot of money. Well, have you have you calculated what you're gonna need to do the things you want? Okay, what do you want? Okay, cool. Listen, I want to be able to take care of my grandma. I didn't tell y'all this either. My grandma's in the hospital, mm. right? And she's in a um, convalescent home. So if my mom says, "Yo, like, I need some money for this." You want I, to get, I want to give, give it to her. Okay. And, and 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 that that um that desire and necessity to me is more important than the rest of the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I will sacrifice the rest for that. Right. The, how people get confused? People think they can rest as much as they want and still have the things. Oh. No. I'm not saying y'all, but I'm saying yeah. that's that's what people think. And I'm saying, yo, go ahead and rest. Just know that you sacrificing that. You sacrificing that thing. And if you say you really want that, then you have to sacrifice rest. But you can't have both. You can't have both without putting a ton of work in first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you put in. You got to put a ton put of work in. Work. in. So I, I'm like, because this is how I look at it, right? Um, let's say. In order to achieve your goals, you had a financial goal of, let's call it $800 a day, right? Mm-hmm. And let's say before, at one point in time, it took you 
eight hours to get eight hundred dollars a day. Correct. Right. Mm-hmm. If you came across a way for it to take you two hours to get eight hundred dollars a day, mm-hmm. what I'm saying is we gonna we gonna we gonna maximize that two hours to get that eight hundred dollars. You getting two hundred? I mean, you getting eight hundred in two yeah. hours? Exactly. Or right. You keep working. And that and that six hours, I don't need to keep working. No. Because there 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 was a goal. No. So now that six hours can go back into the my my real deposits. Spending Correct. time with my grandma. Correct. Spending time with my mom. Spending time with my family. That's what I'm talking about. I when I say work smarter, not harder. Like I feel like I feel like we were conditioned to where it's like, hey yo, I need this eight hundred and eight hours. Okay, I was able to do it in two hours. I got six more hours I could still work. Nah. I'm not doing that no more. That used to be who I was. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that no more. Okay, can I can I ask you this though? So you got that eight hundred and two hours. Yep. And you got six more left. But let's say the bigger so you say a, a day eight hundred dollars. So let's say eight hundred dollars over a week or eight hundred dollars a day over a week is fifty six. Mm-hmm. Fifty six, I think. Fifty six hundred dollars. All right. Mm-hmm. So now let's say in those the remaining six hours you could get that fifty six, or the remainder the remainder of that fifty six and the remainder with, the, with those six hours left, would you would you try to go get that? It's probably going to be with a different formula, and I now I have to create a new formula to do something else because that formula for that eight hours was oh, yeah. condensed to two hours. Now the six hours we asking me to essentially kind of create something else. Okay. Okay. So now it's just like, that is where I feel like people fall into the workaholic space uh-huh. because it's like, oh, I got the time so I could put the, and it's like, well. There has to be some discipline somewhere. There has to be discipline somewhere because if you're saying this 800 was the goal for me for the day, let's say at one point in time, 800 took you 19 hours in the day. Uh-huh. And then now you condense it down to eight and then you condense it down to two and you're like, well, let me fill this other six hours. Uh-huh. There's, you got to check yourself. Yeah, for sure. Like at some point in time, you got to look at it and be like, "Hey, yo, enough is a, enough is enough." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me in this space, maybe I want to I want to get another another fulfillment, but it shouldn't be the the money anymore. My yeah. money, I'm fulfilled there. Yeah. You know, so I feel like what I used to do was, "Oh, I got to go. Oh, let's keep pushing. I did it in this amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep pushing. That's definitely been me in the past yeah. as well. I want I want to maximize. I'm trying to. I did eight. Well, let's just do sixteen. How can let's I do thirty two. get this over with. Yeah, I, I probably get thirty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that, it was, go ahead. And I, I'm just saying, like, I, I feel like that's a mindset that a lot of people fall into. Yeah. That keeps them in in the so called that 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 puts you in a rat race. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, I, I feel that. So you so, know. So I think what's interesting is when people say, "Yo, you have to be disciplined." A lot of times, people equate discipline with hard work. Mm-hmm. But you have to be disciplined to rest. Yep, you do. You have to be disciplined to say, no, nah, I'm good. Yep. I take the gym, for example. So I'm on the bench, and I'm doing four sets of 10. And I tell myself, the, the goal is to do four sets of 10 on 225. And I do it, but I feel good. But I'm so what I do, I'm like, okay, I'll do another set. But the goal was two, two, four, the, the, the plan was to do four sets of 10. Mm-hmm. And once I do that, I stop. But because I felt good, I kept going. And sometimes being undisciplined means you keep going. Discipline means hey, you, you said you was going to stop. 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 Because sometimes we think we can't do more is being disciplined. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like to your point, I think learning how to stop and cut off does take discipline as well. Because sometimes if you feel good, you're just going to listen to your body. Just like if you feel bad, going to see your body yeah it brings me to a to a thought you know even talking about you because this is actually good that you you be stopping after those times because there is a thing when you're talking about the gym too let's let's stick with that analogy there is a thing of overtraining yep you can get to a point like there's some even sometimes like someone may give you a some people may out here may be buying plans from some people Mm -hmm. and the plan may say four sets of six Mm -hmm. you know what i mean (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, it's and the the plan is designed though for you to hit four sets of six this week, so you could hit five sets of two in four weeks. Uh-huh. You know what I mean at a heavier, intense weight, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. 
But if you overtrain, you mess up the plan. You can mess up the plan and mess up the flow. So that when, when so you can mess up the progress, and now you become stagnant, and yeah. it, you're yeah. not seeing any you hurt progress. Yourself. Now you hurt yourself. Now we're running in place. So I think it's important to not over overtrain. Yeah, that's a fact. But that's actually really hard to do when you're in yeah. that phase where it's like, yeah. I'm going. I feel good. Yeah. That set was nothing. So yeah. to stick with that, right? I feel like doing the extra set, you in a space like I'm grinding, mm -hmm. right? But when you follow in a plan, you're building. Mm -hmm. So in the I'm building phase, if I said it's eight hundred dollars in a day and I did it in two hours, this is what the plan is. Just better stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Yep. I understand. I'm sure I can probably go and scrape up something else and grind and go do something else. But it's like I don't. I don't have to. I don't have to do that. Nah. I said this is what the plan is. Don't deviate. Don't deviate from the plan, right? Because yeah. the plan, the plan is all encompassing. The plan is mm -hmm. the money for the bills. The plan is the money for saving. The money for vacation, mm -hmm. and all, and the money for insurances. The money for children. That's what, the, and it's covered. And now I'm I'm burning myself out more to fulfill essentially what my ego is. And I feel like we make so much egotistical deposits rather than just understanding like, hey, I, I did the plan. You did four sets of 10. Oh. You didn't have to do the extra egotistical deposit. You did right, the work. Right. You did the work. You did the work. Right, like right. that's what you, you wrote works. out. This is what you said right, you was right. going to do. The work is done. And it's done. Yep. yep. You know, yep. so I feel like I used to do that. That goes back to my point. Regardless of the results, like just stick, you did the work. Did yeah. the work. You did the work. The plan. You did the you stick to the plan, bro. You did the work. There's no need to do nothing extra. Mm -hmm. You did the work, regardless of the results. Mm -hmm. You did the work. Let's let's move on. Yeah. We try to rest the results though. Yeah. Because the plan tells you what the results are gonna be. Plan says if you stick to it, if you stick to it, if you stick to it, stick to it, right? You do this, this, and this. The plan, the end, the plan don't say if you do extra set, yeah. you're gonna cheat. Like if or it's you gonna get there faster. Or you're gonna get there faster. <laughs> nah. Say rest on Tuesday. Now I'm going there. Tuesday. I'm going there on Tuesday. I'm gonna do Wednesday's workout on Tuesday, so I can move Friday's workout to Wednesday, and then I just bring the next week in and do it early. And it's like, nah, rest is a part of the reward. Yeah, I know rest is not a reward, but it's a part of the reward, which is yeah. the plan at the end. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm 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 looking at things a lot more like that now. Emotionally, how do we get? How do you get men to subscribe to the rest emotionally in the, in a society? that qualifies or disqualifies men based on their output? Honestly, I think people have to really, really hone in on what it is that they want. Because when you know what it is that you want, there's there's no need to not rest. So for example, if you're saying, hey, I want to buy a home, right? Mm -hmm. Buying a home is what you want. You have to create the A to B steps though. What does buying a home look like off of what my income currently is? Oh, okay, cool. I need to save $2,500 a month and I'll be able to buy my home in two years. That's what the plan is. Mm. If you save $2,500 in your month and you got 10 extra days, rest. Rest. But people are going to be like, hey, yo, nah, maybe I can expedite the process. Nah, follow the, just follow the plan. The plan, plan mm. two-year plan. It's a two-year plan. Follow the plan. And I think a lot of times we get out of the scope of what the plan originally was because you're like, Yo, I'm going yeah. to expedite it. I'm yeah. going to move it forward. I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to do yeah. this. We all saving for something, right? Whether you're saving for your next investment or you're saving for, you know, just to have a better lifestyle. We all saving for something. But I think you should always know what you're saving for, what that number is, and what the goal is, and what the plan is for that. Mm -hmm. That's helped me out tremendously. Because mm -hmm. before it was just like bread. Bread, bread. I don't like the way my account looking. Bread. But it's like, I don't like the way my account looking, but I'm on par for my savings. So it's like, something has got to give. Because I'm on par with my goal, I never said I need my account to be somewhere. I said, this is the goal over here. Mm -hmm. So just because I don't like this, doesn't mean that this is not where it's supposed to be at. And I feel like we want everything to be here. We want everything to be where we want it to be. You have when you're following the plan, it doesn't always look like that. Mm -hmm. If you're you guys played football, if the plan is to run the ball, hey, we could we could break them down. Come to it, come the fourth quarter, we'll be breaking them down. Ten yards of carry come the fourth quarter. In the third quarter, bro, second quarter, you guys is not getting ten yards of carry. You can't be like, hey, let's throw bombs away on these guys. 
we're not getting anywhere. It don't work like that. Mm-hmm. Th- that's not the plan. I'm, I am now looking at the plan and trusting the plan. And I think as well as a leader of your home, you have to have a plan and you have to follow it in order mm-hmm. for your partner to believe in it. So if you say, hey, yo, this is what our financial goal is every single month and you hit the financial goal early and she still see you doing things that kind of go against what you said the goal was, she has the right to ask questions. She's going to ask questions. She see you deviating outside the plan. What you think she's going to do? Mm-hmm. Now she's going to be asking about those those things that's going against the plan because you're doing it. Yep. Well, I know you said we're not eating out, but you worked extra, so we might as well go eat out now. I know you said that, you know, we're not going to be buying anything, but I just bought this because you worked a little extra this month anyway. So, nah, you got to stick in the plan. Like, you got to be a leader even, even when it's inconvenient. You, I, I would say, too, you got to also look yourself in the mirror and reassure yourself every day that, like, what you're doing, no one knows. The other man outside, that societal pressure, that outside noise, they don't understand what my plan is. My plan, I know where I'm going, so like I know what work I'm doing and when I can rest. And when I rest, I don't have to feel the pressure of this man working because he's working on something completely different. Mm-hmm. And he got a completely different mission than me. Mm-hmm. I understand what my mission is and where I'm mm-hmm. going. So like you, you can't. I can't. I'm not influenced by. I'm not influenced by you getting your workout in before I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That don't that 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 don't make me say, ah, oh, shit, I gotta get up and go change my time because Duke, I seen Duke just got got his off. Mm-hmm. My plan is to get it in at noon. Mm-hmm. I'll be there at noon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be there at noon, and I'll be there you're at noon. You're good at that though, bro. You're really good at that. What you don't you you could be in a lane and have your blinders on. You don't gotta look left and right. Uh, I'm going this way. Yeah, I'm going this way, bro. bro. It's yeah. all good. It's all good, that. and I see I see what you're doing over there. I respect it too. <laughs> Yo, that shit's that. actually admirable. That's you know what I mean? mean? But I think I think that's important. Is you know having that reass- that reassurance with yourself in the mirror, mm-hmm. right? And monthly, maybe even weekly. I think daily is t- a little too too aggressive, too mm-hmm. much. But like mm-hmm. weekly checking in with yourself and like, mm-hmm. hey man, we still on path. We're doing this. Mm-hmm. We're going in this direction. Don't worry about what they do. What Jalan's doing over to the right. What Duke's doing over to the left. Mm-hmm. I see them though. Like use use them as when you can as motivation, right? But I'm not influenced. Yeah, that's not your life. Th- that's not my life. That's not yeah. your life. That's not my life. No. That's not my life. Not so my I life. think that's important. Okay, so okay, question. One for you, one for you. Um, with your with your son. Okay. When are you gonna when are you going to insert the value? Are you going to insert the two values of hard work and working hard and working smarter at the same time? No. Okay. No. Which one are you going to install first? He's going to see what hard work look like. Okay. And he's going to see the dividends that hard work pays. I got you. So, because working smarter look different for everybody. I can't teach you how to work smart. I, I don't think that's necessarily something that I could teach you if you don't know how to work hard. So, I need to, you have to know how to do that, like, first and foremost. And when I say working hard, it doesn't mean physical labor i mean it means sometimes you you sitting down and you are reading a book in two days in order to achieve something that you're trying to achieve it doesn't necessarily mean physical labor but it just means getting the job done and he's going to see what getting the job done looks like every day he's mm-hmm. going to see what that looks like whether it's through me whether it's through y'all he's going to know what it looks like um there is a physical aspect that he's going to have to see as well He's going to know what it looks like to work hard in the gym. I feel like that was something I wish I would have learned earlier. Earlier. Mm. To just like know what it like really feels like to push your body through limits that you didn't think that you could like achieve. Mm. I want him to be able to experience that really, really young. You're not in your head and like you're in a grid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I feel like every young man should learn that. Uh, I'll say at least by 10. Every young man I feel like should know that, hey, I wanted to stop. And I didn't stop and I kept going and I got stronger and I liked it. I think every young man should learn that by like 10. You know, um, I think track is a good way of doing that. Running the 400. My dad used to make us run the 400. So we felt what that felt like really, really early. Mm. And that like that would that's what hard work is for a kid. Like hard work isn't, you know, going to the office, going to the my dad used to take us to the office, but we played on what the Xerox machine. What can we do? It was fun to us. Yeah. But we knew how hard sports could be 
and he put us in a position to do that. So I'm definitely showing what hard works look like, mm -hmm. and let him figure out. Let works. him figure out okay. how to make it easier for yeah, yourself. Yeah. yeah, and and for you, oh, what did you like? Did you grow up in a household where? It was always about challenging how hard you was working. Did your dad always challenge you to work hard no matter what you was doing? Or did that just come mostly from sports? No, my dad challenged me to work hard outside of school. Outside of school, because I feel like all of our parents challenge us to work hard and be the best student possible, right? Especially in a black household, education is like number one. But I was encouraged to really work hard once I express my interest in something. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what I want to do. I, I, I love that my dad, cause I, and I feel like the hard work really came from my, from my dad. Yeah. Right. But I feel like that's something I really want to take from our relationship and implement it in the relationship between me and my daughter, mm -hmm. between me and ocean, because, you know, I feel like had he pushed me to work hard at something that I wasn't necessarily passionate or interested in, who knows how we would have, it would have affected our relationship. Yeah. You know, I felt like our relationship is so good, so great, because he actually pushed me to work hard on the things that I wanted to, to work hard at. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it almost, he almost put a battery pack in my back mm -hmm. that, tr that allowed me to be successful in the things that I wanted to do because I said that I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. He said, Hey, if you want to do it, you should be, you should aim to be great at it. If you want to be great, these are the things that you should do. And, I'm going to encourage you each day to do those things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was so beautiful by my dad, man. Like, he did, he did that without forcing it. And it worked. It paid dividends for our family for a period of time. You know what I mean? It allowed me to become really successful in a certain area of my life. And those, him pushing me actually built characteristics that I'm able to take over to the next phase in each other phase of my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And constantly be able to understand what hard work looks mm -hmm. like when I'm approaching new things. So... To that point earlier, that question that you asked, I can't look at O's hard work as something he wanted to do as sacrifice. How he's saying it paid dividends. It did this. It did like, and this is something he wanted to do. Yeah. So it's hard for me to look at a able-bodied person who has a desire and their mind is right to do something and say, "Man, you really sacrificed to get here, O." I just, I, it's it's hard for me to look at it like that. I don't define sacrifice like that. Well, the the hard work is not the sacrifice, though. It's not the hard work. It's not you're not you're not sacrificing the hard work. You actually run into the hard work. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing the hard work. What happens when 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 you when you submit to the hard work, you sacrifice something else. So, in let's say in in your case or our cases, right? Let's say we had friends that after school we'll went out. to we'll hang with the girls. Yep. Mm -hmm. no, I'm just saying that's yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yep. I want I want to hang with the girls. Yep. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, but actually, I'm not gonna do it because I want this more. Yeah, and because I want this more, and I'm gonna work hard for this. Yeah, I'm giving up. I sacrifice. I'm that sacrificing time. that. The hard work is not to sacrifice. Yeah, though, right. So even though even though I'm I'm able body, and I actually enjoy it, and you know I'm not thinking about the girls all the time, don't mean I'm not sacrificing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like the same thing with you just told me, you you down. Right, your weight down, you've been eating right, you've probably been giving up shit that you like. Sacrifice. That's sacrifice. That's, that's, that's sacrifice. sacrifice. That's that sacrifice. Because 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 ain't like, no discipline bigger than your the way you what you putting in your mouth. Bro. That, that part. That part. Yeah. That but that part. Yeah. You that's, know. That's. Oh, side note: food or sex was food. harder to give up. Food. Okay. Food. Okay. You could you could you could be busy your way through sex. Okay. Food. Food, or food or sex. Oh. Food. Food. Harder hard to just to be disciplined with. 1,000%. 1,000%. Like on a day-to-day? -day? Food. 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 Yeah. Food. Food. The hardest food. thing in the world. Yeah. Like. It's, what? Yeah, yeah. Food Food is food is a def, definitely a, a, a difficult discipline, but you know, they always say like, you know, if you really want to know a man's discipline, see. Test see, his diet. Test his diet. Tell him he can't eat something for a certain we'll amount of time. see how disciplined the dude is. Yeah. See, see, you see where he's at, you know? That's why most people who you see disciplined eat the same thing all the time. Yep. At some point in time. If you can't go a stretch and you're just like, yo, this is just what I eat. You're not really that disciplined. I don't believe you are. I don't believe you are either. Mm. 
Dis- discipline mean you're you're result driven. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that be. I mean, I'm here I, for the results. Hey, get out and your that's feelings. it. Get out your feelings. <laughs> hey. I, I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you like. I'm here for the results. I'm here for the results. This shit gonna give me the results. I'm eating it five days a week. How do you guys feel about people um, who are around you guys that talk about what they do want and their desires? And they don't have discipline in the desires that they ex- they express to you. Yeah, I was just thinking about this. They don't want it bad enough. That's what it comes down to. They don't want it bad enough. Because when if you want something bad enough, you gonna do whatever it takes. But most people, most people that say they want things, but really what they mean is, man, it will it would be nice to have that. But as long as I don't have to sacrifice my comfort or give up the things that I really really like. Or stop doing the things I really enjoy. But you got to give up the things you enjoy to get the thing. Mm-hmm. The, the people that you love that are close by you that are moving like that, how often are you being transparent with, with them about the conversation about where they're at? Like, how many times do you have that conversation with somebody, with a friend? I'm trying to think about... Me too. Like, I, 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 well, it has to be just multiple... It has to be... After the first time I noticed it, I'll probably be like, okay, they they just got to get used to it. But if, if it's happening more than one time, it's just like, oh, you don't really want that. You just said, because we all going to say we do want Do you speak things. up on it, though, as yeah. a friend? Yeah, I speak up Like, on at, it. W- at what point do you address that? Yeah, I speak up on it. And then at what point do you not? Mm. You, that's, the, that's the me that I don't think most people like. When you, I feel like when you silently disappoint me, I'm not a good friend no more. Mm. And that I'm, that's something Same. that I'm trying to work on. <laughs> but when you, that's somebody disappointing you? That would be somebody disappointing you? Because you, not, try, not trying to be funny, but like, I'm a, I'm, if we, you want to talk about your dreams, I'm going to give you the ear. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you the game that I can give you. I'm going to give you the time and uh, I'm going to invest with you. I'm going to tarry with you on it. I want you to have it. But I start seeing you like wasting my time. It's going to bother me. Wasted my emotions. You I'm wasted invest, my you invested. you wasted that. It, like not trying to be funny. There's the only people under my roof could like do that. Like outside of, I don't have the capacity mm-hmm. to invest in you like that. And yeah. you you not follow through. We could talk through it, and um, you could say you want it. And I'm not saying you slipped. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you slip. I'm saying you're not living the lifestyle that you say that you desire. You're not going after the things that you said you want. You're not being who you said you want to be. And it's like you want to talk about it again. I don't have the capacity. I got you. And yeah. and, 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 and it, it disappoints me so much, it causes distance for me. Yeah. Mm. So I'm trying to get better at that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I try to get better at that. Yeah, I should just, it just means you don't want it. You don't really want it like that. Because when you decide that I'm getting this thing, you change up everything. Mm-hmm. You're going to do whatever it takes. And what happened, what I noticed with what I noticed with people is most people, they're gonna say, I want it, but not really, not really, really subscribe to it. And most people are gonna do what they can. Anything that fits in their comfort level, anything that fits within the things that they're used to, that doesn't stretch them too much, they're gonna be like, Yeah, I'm down for that. I could do that. Oh, yeah, you saying I, I could drink half a gallon a day? I could do that. Now you gotta drink two gallons a day, because that's what it takes to get to get this thing. Nah, I can't do that. People used to ask me, "Hey, yo, like, how did you, you know, when I met you, you and Omar, y'all used to be in the running the streets. I remember when you were single, but now I see you in a relationship. You much different now. How was that transition? I, I was about to ask you about a real conversation about discipline." How was that conversation? I mean, how was that? How was that transition? Ah, uh, man, you know what? One thing that I did that worked for me, and I think most guys should probably do, is you should try to act like you're in a relationship while you're single. What does that mean? What it meant? What it meant is I really wasn't going out like that. What it meant was when when some women hit me, and I didn't even have anything to do. I wasn't entertaining. I wasn't entertaining. Nah, I can't do that. Okay. You asked me how I got here. Okay. Nah, I can't do it. Okay, yeah. cool. Then you don't want to do whatever it takes. You can. You don't want to. See? Right? Then I'm saying you want to do whatever you're mm-hmm. trying to do, whatever you can, See, but not whatever I'm, it takes. I'm beyond, it's a piece of me that respects that person, though. Where my problem is, is when you come to me for advice on something that you're struggling with, 
and I lay out your personal plan on how you do it and we talk through it and you agree to it and you say, you're right, this is what I'm going to adopt. And moving forward, I see you in my face. You try to be that person and I'm paying attention and you're not following that plan. It's hard for me to talk to you for real. Having a conversation about discipline. Hey, yo, dude, man, you know what? Man, infidelity is tough for me, bro. You know, I see that you committed to your girl. Oh, I see you committed to your girl. Jelan, I see you committed to your girl, bro. Like, what you be doing? Hey, man, I think you should um, unfollow all the girls that you follow, that you're attracted to. I think you should stop watching porn. I think you should take your girl with you everywhere. Oh, okay. All right. No, no, they be like this. All right, for sure. Scroll. Okay, I see this dude like this photo. Okay, so he still follow her. All right, for sure. Okay, cool. I see him at the... I'm scrolling through my stories. I see him at these events. His girl not with him. She don't know where she at. Okay, all right. And then it's just like, yeah, bro, my girl be tripping on me. Bro, <laughs> I wonder yeah. why. <laughs> and you want to sit here and have these conversations. I'm just saying it's... it's I feel like you got to... You got to... You got to... You got to grind hard for you to shine harder, right? You got to work in the dark in order for you to be super bright in the light. And I feel like most people don't want to put the work in in the dark that it requires them to be who they say they want to be. If you're supposed to be eating broccoli and chicken breast, bro, for six weeks for the plan, and I see you eating lasagna, I'm going, I can't have a conversation with you because the plans in front of you is laid out. You know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Mm Mm-hmm. So when I'm ha- when I'm having a conversation with men and they're telling me like, hey, yo, bro, I admire what you got going on with your relationship. What is it that you do? You're telling me that you don't have the answers and you're willing to accept mine. And when I give you mine, you're willing to do it until. And it's just tough for me to digest that. Mm-hmm. It's tough for me to yeah. to sit down and and really give my energy to somebody and truth be told, give the vulnerability and the intimacy that you have witnessed the success of my relationship is based off of to you. And you just kind of take the information and do whatever you want to do. It makes it tough for me. So you, I see how people start creating circles to where it's just like, I'm just going to only be with dudes who think how I think. Hey, Duke, I'm dealing with this tough situation. What you think about this? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna call him. And I see how those circles form to where it's it's just we don't even speak to those kind of guys. And I hate that because I feel like those guys should always be able to have a space to be able to come back to. But when you're not trying to make no progression, I look at it like every space of discipline. If somebody say they want to work out with you and they don't show up to their workouts, you're not accepting that call for that no more. Mm-hmm. I feel the same exact way. When you say you want to be a certain a certain man to your family, a certain man to your woman, and you're not making those steps, I'm not really picking up. The, we're not talking about that no more. Mm-hmm. It's tough for me to operate in that space because we all struggle, and I feel like you're kind of you 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 slapping me in the face and telling me I don't struggle the same way you struggle. You're just not willing to put in the work that I'm putting in. These this there's steps to becoming this. We used to be outside. Yeah. We was doing the same things, if not on a higher level than most guys, bro. We made a decision to say like, hey, yo, bro, when I was a child, I did childish things. And when I became a man, I wanted to be a man, bro. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it just, it, it, it bothers me. It's, it burns me up inside when somebody say they can't do it as if I don't struggle. I struggle with the same things you do. I just now live in the space of... It's easier for me now. I can now lift 225 because I started with 135. People say they can't do it, though. It's so interesting because unless you physically or have an illness, then you can do it. Mm-hmm. You're just choosing not to. Or maybe you're just not able to do it right now. Or maybe you're just not able to do it right now. But you can do it. But you can give them cheese. Still eat cheese. Hey, hey, you can give. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> hey, but you could give up cheese, dog. Hey, yo. Hey, you could give up cheese, bro. One thousand percent. Don't say you can't give up cheese. If you say you can't give up cheese, then you're not ready to do. You're not trying to do what it takes. The same person to say they can't give up cheese would be say the same person 
will be the same person that says I could make a million dollars. It's like, well, I can't even believe you. How, what makes me think? What? How can I believe you that you can when you tell me when? Shit, I'm believing that you can't. Did that make sense? Yeah. Because making a million dollars, you gotta give stuff up too. Nah, it's so interesting, man. How often you guys come across people who um, not appear to want to make real change? They're actually like making the steps to make real change and you guys have conversations toward the change. I know, I feel like we're all in the transformative space Mm -hmm. and dealing with whether it's older men or younger men or men our age that say they want to achieve real change. It's very rare that I actually see it. How often do you guys see it and experience it? And you see the fruit of the real change that somebody made. Uh, I wouldn't say it's often. It's not as often as I would like, but I do see it. I do see, I do recognize there's a lot of my peers that are. And and to be honest, it's not only inspiring and admirable, but, you know, it's something, almost something to kind of chase, even though I'm in my own lane as well. Um, You know, I think, I think seeing it from the people that that are close to you is extremely important. Mm -hmm. It's, It's extremely important. And trying to, I guess add more people in your circle is even more important and even removing those who aren't, I think it's equally as important as well. You know, man, I just think real change is so hard. I but, think, but, but why is it hard? Because real change actually requires you to change. And when you see it, you see it. It's not something it's change is not subtle. That's one thing I have learned. I got a homeboy. I, I respect this man tremendously. He thinks I'm joking all the time, but I respect him tremendously. My man used to be a pimp, used to be a gangbanger, uh, was incarcerated for over nine years, dog. And he came out and he's 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 produced movies like Creed. He's produced Black Panther. And this is somebody who got fully away from the life and said, this is what I'm going to start doing. My man is programmed. He wakes up, he works out, he goes to work, he goes to meetings, he goes home, he gets rest. There's no, he's not a pimp. He don't play in the space at all. When he goes back to his neighborhood, it's to walk his mom around the block and leave. And I I could see the change in him. Same person, same guy. But I see the change and I see how dramatic it is. I see you. I see the change in you, Omar. I see how dramatic it is. Duke, I see the change in you. I see how dramatic it is. But when somebody tell me they want to change and I still see them going to the same spots, still see them doing the same thing, it's very difficult for me to take them seriously. And I feel like people feel like they can live on both sides of the fence and still be as successful and walk the straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. I think the only way to walk the straight and narrow, ironically, is on each on one side of the it's, fence. Is, is changing hard or is developing new habits hard? Because I feel like people change every day and it's not hard for them to change. Sometimes people change very easily without even knowing that, they, that they're that they changing in the moment. So I feel like creating the habits is what's hard. Well, well, I feel like you said change is not easy. Yeah, and, and I think gotcha. that's kind of saying like, yo, change, change, true change doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. No. Those habits you're talking about, yeah. those change you over time. Mm-hmm. All right, so the small habits you keep doing it for good or for bad. But however you change, it's not going to happen overnight. So I can't be a really, really good, hardworking person today, and then tomorrow I'll be a lazy bum. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. It's a process. It's a process. Over Mm -hmm. time, you know, I have to start developing bad habits to become that, and then vice versa. All right? And I think when we say true true change is hard, it's hard because it's that process of stacking habits after habits after habits of gradual habits is what makes it hard. You know what I mean? And I think that's the hard part. But changing itself is a byproduct of the habits. Mm-hmm. You know, that that type of stuff. So, but yeah, no, nah, I, I feel you. <laughs> I don't believe people. I don't believe people who say they want something, but they don't show me anything or do something or put themselves in environments that are conducive to those things. I don't believe that. And Does your environment have to change for you to change? Does your environment have to change? No, your your environments that you are doing bad habits in, 
is that a sign of an outsider? Nothing changes if nothing changes. Mm-hmm. I I don't want to give you I don't want to give you a definite answer. It's not absolute, but it's going to be very hard for you to change if you don't change your environment. I do believe you can stay in the same environment and change internally, and that give you the the external output. But that's tough though because but there's, there's still influences it's, there it's in that, that environment. It's still, it's still tough. It's tough. It's still tough. But your environment could be. A mental thing. Your environment could be what pages you watch on Instagram. Your environment could be porn. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Your environment could be what TV shows you watch. That yeah. type of stuff. That could be your environment. You know what I mean. Your it could also be how you interact in your environment. You know what I'm saying. So, so maybe I'm going to the club as a, as someone who's just a club goer. But then maybe I'm going to the club as someone who's trying to promote nice and neat, right? Maybe now I'm the maybe now I'm the owner. That space is still the same. It's just like what position am I taking in that space? Yeah, be, see, being yeah, being the owner is, is something different. I kind of man, it's I I I look at it like if I was somebody who struggled in one area. It can't be my ministry to still be in that area. Mm-hmm. It just, it just, I don't think it can be. I feel like you can speak to people who are in that and pull them out, but you can't go in there to pull people out Mm-mm. because that was a weak space for you. And I feel like what was once a weak space for you will always be. If you stay in there, it can. It's, it's always gonna be able to. It's, it's your cross. That's what you carry. Yeah. That's what you struggle mm-hmm. with. Yeah. If you struggle with women, I don't advise that your ministry be in the club. Yep. <laughs> I don't advise it. But I know some people who can go to the club and it's not an issue. Mm-hmm. Yep. It won't be an issue at all. But I feel like if that's your struggle, like, you know, I, I don't advise that. I don't advise if your struggle is is with hard drugs to go to the houses and sit there and try to minister with them on the steps. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't advise that. Mm-hmm. That's not where I would be at with it. I feel like some people try to make the excuse so they can still be in the environment and say, sure. but I'm not like that anymore. For sure. You don't got to be strong. Be smart. Be smart. That's you don't got to be yeah. strong. Be smart. Put yourself, set yourself <laughs> Wait up. To bring for... it back around. <laughs> <laughs> set yourself up for success, Come dog. On, man. You know, like in, in Omar mentions, uh, he, he, Omar doesn't drink. Right. And, you know, I feel like alcohol is one of those things that just lowers everybody's in not I feel alcohol lowers everybody's inhibitions and ability to make clear cut decisions. Mm-hmm. And if you know that is something that is going to do when you're in certain environments, it's like, hey, yo, I stay away from that. Yep. Yep. Right. But the person who goes into these environments and be like, oh, I can still do it. And then they still go and make a mistake. It's hard for me to have just like. A big, a, a large level of empathy for that when you know the hindrance mm-hmm. that is on you. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo, I don't, I don't mess with cheese. Okay, cool for sure. But I'm gonna go to this fast food spot. And I'm gonna see if I can order something without cheese. Like, bro, like, just stay away from the whole space. Yep, like, stay yep. away from all of that, dog. Yeah, yep. you're not really, you're not really, really ready to give it up. Nah, bro. You're not trying to give it up. Nah. So I, I just, it's, it's, it's tough for me, guys. I'm just being yeah. completely candid. I want to be. Uh, more, more, more empathetic to help people out, yeah. but it's just it's hard for me to to to, to stick with it yeah. when I see them not sticking with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. fellas, you got anything else? I'm good, bro. Nah, man, I don't have anything. You show. I I I, 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 I wore out the mic already. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, y'all, really appreciate you guys for tapping in and watching and listening to Nice and Neat the podcast, man. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, be sure to follow us on all social platforms and subscribe to us on your favorite streaming platform. Um, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought. Give us some feedback. All right. And much love. Much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. This is another episode of Nice and Neat. And that's that on that. Peace. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm going to pull forward.